Welcome to Vision One Media Artist Shoutout. My name is Ella Beth. You all know that by now. Um, I'm going to be your host for this episode, like most episodes. Um, and today I'm really excited to introduce this guest who's come along. Um, she was actually the first musician or the first singer that I ever heard and saw perform live when I came here to America, when I came to Atlanta. So that's really exciting. Um, but she's also been a real inspiration in my, my journey as a musician here in Atlanta and, and getting to know the scene and stuff. So I'm really, really excited to get a, to have a chat with you today. I'm going to welcome you, Melody. Thank you. So do you... Oh, come on. I know, right? Like, oh, come on. Um, so do you go by Melody the Artiste as your stage name or is that just more like your Instagram, Monica? It's most definitely just the Instagram name. I mean, it's kind of cheesy if I write it. <laughs> if I write it in a Are fan, but... Geez? <laughs> yes, this is Philly Artiste, but I only came up with that name because I do more than just music. I'm also an actress. Right. I also dance, do musical theater. I write. So that's stuff that I just like to do. Right. And that encapsulates all of your creative pursuits. Right. So I feel like we have a similar uh, musical background in, don't, if I'm not wrong, um, growing up in church. Right. And singing in church and singing in choir. Right. Um, worship band. Um, that, was just, that was how you got your start? Yeah. I mean, I had no choice. My mom was the director of the children's choir. So. Oh, <laughs> you were straight in there. Oh, yeah, so okay. I was going to be in it regardless yeah. if yeah. I wanted to or not. Yeah. <laughs> But I wanted to. Um, I've always had a heart for singing only because my mom, she also um, was my inspiration for music. So after I heard her sing on a record called There on the Cross, and it was a song uh, that was written for the church's album. Okay. So when she did that song... Um, I was like, oh my gosh, my mommy's famous. Not knowing that she wasn't famous, but in my mind, she was she's famous. On like, she's Absolutely. on a record. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Come on now, mommy. <laughs> and they will always play it in church. And I was like, I want to be a singer just like my mommy. Mm. So, yeah. So, where did the love for jazz come from? Not from my mommy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, jazz really just came out of nowhere, to be honest. Um, no one, like, just spoon-fed it to me. I didn't go to, like, jazz concerts. I wasn't introduced to the history like most people were okay. or born into it. Um, I know just enough, like, my father would play smooth jazz, but I would always go to sleep to it. So it was nothing, like, yeah. I was, like, totally interested in. But I do remember one day I was in high school and we were getting ready to sing at Spivey Hall. And my director, S. Renee Clark, um, she was like around the piano. All of us came around the piano and then she just started playing chord changes. And then she was like, Melody, go ahead and scat over this. And then I was like, OK, because we were all just having fun. Yeah. And I was like, just having fun. And then she looked at me and I was like, why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me like that, Miss Clark? She was like, OK, do it again. And I was like, OK, I'm going to do it again. And so I did, and then a week later, it was a post on the bulletin board in my high school. I went to Tri-Cities High School. And um, they set out a, a call for a new singer. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, we need a new jazz singer. And she was like, Melody, you're auditioning. I said, huh? And she was like, you're auditioning for jazz band. I said, okay, <laughs> oh, sure. <what>? Okay. <laughs> so I auditioned, and... The band director even started looking at me crazy. I was like, uh, what? It was bad? Like, what? What's wrong? And then he was like, no, it was good. I said, okay. And then from then on, I just started doing jazz. But what really captured my attention was when, you know, everybody has to do chores when you're at home. Yep, and my yep. mom told me if I wanted to go to the movies with my friends, I had to... Do them chores? Yes. Yep. So I was cleaning out the refrigerator, and I just had a playlist going since I auditioned for Jasmine. I was like, okay, let me see what it's about. And then Ella Fitzgerald, live performance, doing one-note samba, took me all the way out. I was like, I have to do what she does. I was like, this is amazing. I love that. Yeah. So that yeah. is a great record. She really did a really cut a really excellent record with that one. Yes. Because I remember the first time that I I heard you sing, you did um, Tisket a Tasket. 
Yeah. Wait. More like the Ella Fitzgerald version. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, this is free. I'd never heard anyone perform it live before. I'd only ever heard um, recorded versions of it. So yeah. to hear it live and to hear you do it, knowing that there was like some Ella Fitzgerald like inspiration in there, I was like, this is so freaking cool. Yeah. So would you say that uh, she's one of your big inspirations yes. in, in the jazz genre? 100% go to. And then my second person was Louis Armstrong. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that was a given because they did a whole duet album together. Right, right. So I was like, yeah, yeah. this is it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I would say my third person, as I've gotten older, would most definitely be um, Fats Waller. Although he is not a like go to like singer singer, his phrasing is ridiculous. Mm. The way that he plays with the lyrics is amazing, and like I just love how he composes and ar- arranges and writes music. Like yeah. he just enjoys it. Yeah, like you could tell that he just has the absolute most fun when he's doing what he does. Yeah, and he'll take like any life situation. Like he made a song called "Your Feet's Too Big." Yeah. Who does that? <laughs> Literally, because he was a big guy. Yeah. So he had big hands. He was tall. He was huge. Yeah. And then he had big feet and then wrote a song about your feet's too big. That's amazing. Just yes. straight up take, like, that's literally like a, what do they call that? Um, I think that's like a, a particular term for like, like um, realistic lyricism, you know? Yeah. Like just straight up taking a page out of the the journal you know and, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. putting it to music that's yeah. really cool and I mean Billy Strayhorn he also did that especially when he did mm. um, what is it not not that song uh, what is it it'll come to me later in the podcast I'm sure yeah it'll come to me later but Billy Strayhorn incredible writer 100% Lush Life is one of my favorite that is what I was gonna oh, say that was you it? literally okay. <laughs> Get out my brain. Lush yes. Life is probably by far one of my favorite jazz tunes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the 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 grit in the lyrics, like the fact that he wrote it when he was so young, that's right. crazy to me. I'm like, you know, we got these 16 year olds out here, like, um, mm, my soda pop, my boyfriend. Rah, rah, right, rah. Right. Meanwhile, like back in the day, Billy Strayhorn just like talking about like the wheel of life. <laughs> Honey, have you even been around the Wheel of Life yet? Like, <laughs> and I mean, that's that's crazy you would say that because even regardless of age, we don't even know what life has dealt everybody right, individually. Right. So I already know, like, one of the greatest quotes who I cannot quote right now was saying, if you want to be a great songwriter, you have to go through a lot of pain. Mm, yeah. And I was like, what? Well, then I don't want to be a songwriter. Then. <laughs> Just give me the mic. I'll just sing. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, I mean, I do dip and dab in that, and that's just because we're all dealt that hand. Right, Whether right. it's the positive one or the negative one. Right, so. right. So you were saying before that you also uh, do musical theater. I know that you have been, um, or at least last year, you were working on uh, Ain't Misbehaving, right? Yeah. Which is the Fats Waller musical. Yes. Okay. Yes. So tell me about what that experience was like. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Well... It was actually, like, my first major musical that I've done. I was still in college at the time when I did it. And I was with some heavy hitters, I tell you, with Lawrence Flowers and Latrice Pace. They are, like, the pinnacles of gospel music. Like, one of the few pinnacles of gospel music. And being in rehearsal with them, I, I I did get intimidated a little bit. And it was only because it was like, wow. Yeah. Like, your voice can do that. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. And I just knew, I was like, I just want their greatness to rub off on me, Lord. Just yeah. let, they, <laughs> let they sweat fall on me, something. Just let it happen. <laughs> but I remember talking to Latrice, and I was like, man, I don't even know if I can keep up with you guys. And she was like, don't ever say that. You can do whatever you put your mind to. You're here for a reason. Mm. And I was like, dang, she going to make me cry. In rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I love that. I've, there's so many times that I've talked about it um, on this podcast, but like, it's so important in in any artistic 
um, feel, but yeah. I feel particularly in music is so important that we encourage younger generations and that we keep that community spirit alive because right. we weren't given these gifts that we've been given to like hoard or to yeah. have for ourselves, you know, like they're there to be shared and a, a big part of that is is encouraging the next generations and stuff so I love that for you that right. you could like fangirl out but also yes. like, yeah like I I just I deserve this space too you know that's yeah. awesome and man rehearsal was intense we did rehearsals for about two weeks and it was like go time let's do it and we were like the opening show since all the theaters shut down because wow. of covid wow. so we had to bring the house down it's yeah. either go big or go home and <laughs> yeah i mean it was good we went big we were even in the um atlanta constitution journal so yeah i saw I the was, photos yes so cool and listen i didn't even know <laughs> because my um my donors, because in college I had a scholarship and they were my donors, and they saw the newspaper before I saw the newspaper, and they're like, Melody, you're in the newspaper. I said, where? I was like, what newspaper? <laughs> and then they were like, you're in the Atlanta Constitution Journal. I said, what? That's I was like, crazy. you are freaking kidding me. Yeah. So then one of my teachers also told me, he was like, I didn't even know you were in a musical. Why didn't you tell anybody? I was like, well, I mean, y'all bogging me down with homework, tests, quizzes, performances. <laughs> I was like, listen, I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm yeah. like, I'm in it, so you can come if you want. But I was just so excited to for it to be that mainstream to mm. where it got in the newspapers. Like, you can do musicals all day long and, and be known, you know? Yeah. yeah. For it to be in the newspaper? Yeah. I was like, that's crazy. And for it to be my first mainstream musical, I was losing my junk. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Congratulations. That <laughs> is really you. cool. Thank you. So are you currently working on any other like musical theater um, projects at the moment? So right now, I am not. I am most definitely diving into more jazz. I'm working on my album right now. Album EP-ish right now. Okay. So yeah, it'll be my first one. Because, okay. Because, you know, I got to let the world hear my sound. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I, I, it's something that I'm also uh, working on for this year. And the whole like album recording thing, it comes so naturally to other people. I don't know if you feel the way that I feel. Mm -hmm. I've always seen myself as more of a performing artist than a recording artist. So as much as I love being in the studio and, and it'd be really cool to like lay down my tracks mm -hmm. um, this year, but it, as much as that's really cool, I'm just like, man, I just want to be on the stage. Like mm -hmm. I just, you know, I want to sing this to people uh, yeah. live. So like, because the audience, they give you a different type of energy, a different mm. type of oomph when you sing. So being in a dark box all day with headphones on, I mean, obviously, it's a different kind of Talking mood. to yourself, you know? Yeah, you're like, you can do this. Woo, go <laughs> Melody. Like, what? I yeah. gotta try to remember the lyrics. Like, yeah. <laughs> But I most definitely have seen myself more as a live audience mm. performer than a person in the studio I really wanted to avoid the whole studio thing altogether, but my mentors were like, no, you got to record. You got to mm. show people who you are because you're brand new. Right, right. And I was right. like, oh, yeah, I forgot that part. I'm yeah. new. Right. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, yeah, let's do the album. Yeah. But um, I just, I, yeah, I just prefer the live the live sound, the live experience, because it's even different with the instrumentalists behind you. They mm -hmm. get a different type of um from the audience. They yeah. play differently when they get a certain energy from the audience. Yeah. And that's what makes it magical. That makes it beyond a recording, beyond a page, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you're in... Um Going back to the studio for a minute. When you're in the studio, are yeah. you with this this EP Jazz EP? Are you writing as you go, or have you got stuff that you've written, or mm -hmm. how how is this how is this working? Well, I've written some compositions and some arrangements while I was in college before this point. Because I was like, if you have an idea, you should just automatically write it down. Yeah. Like, don't wait. Don't for the sleep moment. on that. Yeah. yeah. Like, just do it, because yeah. God gave it to you in that mm -hmm. moment for a reason. So, yeah. put it down. So, I've, you know, conjured up all of my crumbled up papers and papers with hot sauce and papers with tears on them. And came up with um, one of my original songs. It's called Baby Love. 
And I wrote that back when I was in college. And I also wrote it in like the heat of the moment because I was trying to audition at the same time for um, the Betty Carter Jazz Ahead program. Mm -hmm. And so because that program is more about original music and being jazz, but being jazz of 2022, you Mm -hmm. know, not jazz of... Seventeen hundred, yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> we're 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 here. <laughs> yeah. So I was able to do that program, and that program helped me to make another song and more songs and meet more people. So I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So with your songwriting process, have you you said you've been like a uh, writing and yeah. and and working with other people? Yeah. Do you do you do a lot of like uh, collaborating to uh, to write new material? Well, I've never actually collaborated with anyone when it came to actually writing new music. I've Mm -hmm. collaborated when it came to arrangements, but not Mm -hmm. necessarily like brand new spanking songs with like lyrics and music type thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that something that you're looking forward to perhaps doing in the future? Yes, 100%. I am looking to do that. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. So tell me um what else what else you're currently involved in musically? Yeah. What what what's going on in the in the world of melody? Well, oh, wait. wait. We we didn't even touch on this yet. We talked about this before the interview. Yeah. Tell me about um how you got into uh singing on cruise ships and how you've gotten into that sort of like corporate residential side of of music performance. Uh, well, I'm always going to say this, it's manifestation. Uh honestly, because when I was in college, I said, I'm going to sing on a boat, I'm going to sing on a boat, I'm going to sing on a boat. <laughs> when I get out of here and I graduate, I'm going to sing on a boat. And they're like, Melody, you're not going to do that. Oh, you don't want to do that. You don't really want to do that. I was like, no, nah, I'm singing I'm on a boat. I'm definitely doing that. Yeah, Yeah. so um, my boyfriend, he helped me out um, because he had so many connections because he's been performing since he was eight years old. Okay. Um, but James, he helped me get connected to... Uh, a person who's already connected to an agent. So somebody you know that, somebody you know that, somebody you know. Mm-hmm. Help me cool. get in. And um, I just got my resume. They got my headshot. They got a couple of videos of what I do and stuff. And then it was time for me to get on the boat. It was a nerve-wracking experience yeah. because it was like, oh, I'm going to be away from home for two months. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, I watched enough YouTube videos as I could. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I guess this is what it's like to be on the boat. Yeah. So I packed my comforter, my makeup, my nails, everything I could think of, my wigs, yeah. packed them all up. Yeah. And we got on the boat, and it was a beautiful experience because it did help me to grow and to help me develop some type of strength in different areas that I didn't know I had. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it also helped me to develop more of a, uh, a mindset as how it um, came to creating set list and creating performances for people. Mm. Um, it did also open my eyes to how certain companies view jazz, like how we were talking about before. Like most people, when they view jazz they view it in an aspect of just a recording right they don't view it beyond that right. and i was like it's it's more than that yeah than just a recording and that yeah. goes for all music to be honest yeah it's more than just a recording right that's why i stray away from being in corporate bands even though i was in one but not for very long <laughs> fair fair because they they prioritize doing songs the way they go Exactly how it goes. And <laughs> yeah, I'm the like, same as you. I'm like, if if songs, yeah, no, I mean, I get it. I get it because that's what the audience sometimes yeah. wants to hear, you know. And there's a time and the place for that. I'm the same as you. I'm like, I don't. I'm not introduce. I'm not interested in reproducing yeah. someone else's music. I would love to take someone else's music and inject. Me yeah. or wh- whoever I'm working with, you know, we inject ourselves right. into what we're doing. So now I feel you there, and that's a part of being an artist. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's you know, you're an artist when you just have this undeniable rebellious spirit that's just like, no, I'm gonna do stuff the way that I want to do it. Yeah. yeah, and it's not that we don't input everybody else's opinions or anybody else's like artistic ideas. It's just the fact of. 
God put something inside of me, so I'm going to put it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say real. it. Yeah. So I'm not going to be silenced behind earth, wind, and fire for the rest of oh. my life. <laughs> I just won't. <laughs> <laughs> Much as we love Earth, Wind, and Fire, you guys yeah. are the true OGs. But no, I feel you. I feel you on that. Right. So, in that regard, are you gonna? Are you interested in doing more residencies, or only if you can have more artistic creation? With- so that's what I'm working on right now uh, with um, creating more videos and more content for my band to be able to be, you know, showcased on the cruise ship so mm-hmm. people can be introduced to individuality, to actual original performances yeah, and not just a Spotify playlist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise you could just get a Spotify playlist. Exactly. It'd be a lot cheaper, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm worth more than that. Right. So, yeah. right. And you want me to regurgitate. Like, Listen, I'm trying to save you money. Yeah. <laughs> save money, live better. Spotify. <laughs> That's what the jingle needs to be from right. now. <laughs> right. Uh, so so um, you just mentioned your band. So tell me about your band. Like, how did you guys meet? How did you get playing together? So, I mean, it all happened in bits and pieces. So... Um, as it pertains to my pianist, you know, as a jazz musician, you're always put in different configurations depending yep. on the time and the money yep. and the place. Yep, yep. But um, with the people that I play with mostly, um, one of the pianists, he is my uh, mentor from college. And so that's how I was able to play with him on a, fr- a frequent basis. But the pianist that I play with mostly now, uh, his name is Louis Hervo, and I met him through actually my teacher Tyrone Jackson and we did a gig together at Rays on the River and we met for the first time and then from then on it was like oh yeah we have to play with each other all the time because you don't always meet a musician that you just click with you know because when you like have that like soulmate connection you just you got to make the connect yeah and you got to keep that person forever. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I say that very, very frequently. Like, um, you know, being, being vocalist and, and, and being like doing work in the corporate world, like mm-hmm. you said, it's always different configurations. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm happy to get a call and to go and session in with people. Like, I love performing. Yeah. But there's something different about being on stage and performing, even writing and recording with mm-hmm. Your like your soulmate musicians, just yeah. your you know your like your, I call them your heart musicians, you know. And yeah. I, they're they're not every musician you come along come across is going to be one of those people. And I think, yeah. like you said, like it's really important that you do the thing mm-hmm. with those people because you make magic, right? You know? Undeniable magic, and it's beyond just music. It's like a a spiritual connection almost. Mm. It's kind of freaky, but it is because, like, if you go to certain progressions that's off of like a lead sheet or off of a music uh, composition or whatever, and you guys just take it there without even saying, you know, we're gonna take it there. Yeah, it's like whoa. Yeah. (laughs) Literally, like whatever, whatever just happened, brain waves, like yeah. soul speaking. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. It's- I think that's the, that's the closest to like that's the closest to I don't know, like a, a high that I know of. Yeah, when it when it comes to creativity, is when you can be so locked in without words. Yes, mm. yes, exactly. And I just that's what I thrive for that's what i want and um my boyfriend james robertson he plays drums for me okay and so i mean we just lock in together because we lock in in other ways so that's how that works and um bass player listen i haven't even found my heart bass player yet i wish where are you melody's out here looking if you're a bass player and you're looking for your heart singer and drummer right come on come on now come on (laughs) come on Applications, yeah, except yeah. <laughs> definitely, yes. But with James and uh, Lewis, I do have a good time, and with all my different f- configurations of bass players, we always have a good time, yeah. So I don't ever have a problem with it, mm-hmm. yeah. So what about for the rest of this year? Like you, you said that you're working on your EP, yeah. which is really, really exciting. That's currently happening. Um, what about in regards to like live shows or tours or any mm-hmm. theater stuff or contracts? Mm-hmm. What do you have lined up for 2023 so far? 
So what's lined up for 2023 is absolutely nothing so far. Everything just goes in its own time. Mm -hmm. Nothing is necessarily planned because I'm still new and people are still getting to know me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just take it one step at a time, really. And it's all a surprise to me because yeah. when I graduated from college, after college, I did the Betty ja uh, the Betty Carter Jazz Head program. Then after that, then I did the cruise ship. Then after the cruise ship, then that's when I started doing other endeavors. So I was like, every door opens another door. Mm -hmm. So I'm just mm -hmm. in for the ride. I love that. I love that. That's so exciting. Yeah. That's so exciting. So this is a question that I ask some artists, um, but I'm interested. If you could be on a playbill of five artists, so let's yes. say it's like a an afternoon music festival, one day music festival, yeah. um, dead or alive, who would the other four artists be? So Melody's already on the bill. There's four other spaces. Who would they be? Who would be your dream well, I've already been fangirling about this all my life um, because actually another artist that I am like really inspired by, her name is Jasmine Horn, and she is freaking amazing to me. Like the way that she takes no mess, the way that she just dives into music like fearlessly, mm. mistakes and all. It's like, this is me and this, oh, ooh. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but this is me. This is who I am. Yeah. And I hope you all, you know, take to it and like it. And I appreciate that about her. And um, before I even met her, I made, like, this collage of her, Samira Joy, and Cecile McLaurin. And I cropped my face in there. Are you fine? <laughs> yes, I cropped my face in the little side, like, in the middle in between them. And I was like, I'm going I'm to be on the same uh, line with them one day in a concert. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, so would you, okay, so, Jazz. Jazz Mia Horn. Jazz Mia Horn. Cecile McLaurin. Cecile McLaurin. Samara Joy. Joy. This is Samara Joy who just won the Grammy. Yes. Samara Joy. Yo, that album, I haven't listened to all of it yet, but the bits I've listened to, I was like... Yes. Like, clap it let's, up. Come on. <laughs> more more of this. More of that. Yes. Yeah. Because she has, like, that classic sound, that classic jazz yeah. sound. Which I think, um, from from the the time that I've heard you sing, I also think you have that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I really do. Like, <laughs> your control of your vibrato, um, I think, gives to that classic jazz sound because, yeah. you know, th th that's what they were exploring and that's what they were able to use with the advancing technology of, like, the time of jazz. Yeah. Um, also, the way that you scat. Like, I, I fangirl that. I'm Ew. like, yo, Thank like, you. no wonder your teachers were just floored when they heard you scatting because you just, <laughs> it's you, you just know what. I think the mark of a really great scat or, or, or um, instrumental solo is when you hear the notes you didn't know you wanted to hear, but when you hear them, it's like, that's the most perfect thing I've ever heard. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. you do that when you scout. That's really cool. It's a gift Thank and it's you. it's a skill, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to work on it because I'm telling you, I mean, I've kind of done that before. I even know I could do jazz or I wanted to do jazz. I would do that with just regular like R&B tunes. Like with Adele, I was fangirling Adele when I was like in uh, high school and stuff. And my mom's Ooh. like, what do you know about heartbreak? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was like fangirling her. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. And uh, actually, I would like sing the melody, and I would always sing it differently every time right. because I sang it in a way of what um, came out of my emotions, which mm. I do with a lot of jazz standards. And I mean, that's just—I'm not going to say a controversial topic, but I mean, you could say that is most people feel like when you sing a jazz standard that you should sing it the way that it goes. But that's arguable because it's like if you're in a room full of people who already listen to jazz, who've already heard the records, right. who've already heard the greats, why am I going to bring my black bond up here and sing exactly what someone else sang? Right. Like, right. I get it. You should sing the melody because you're giving, you're paying homage back to the composer. Mm -hmm. But why would I sing it that way in 2023? Absolutely. Yeah. 
that and you know even even down to like not only just melody but phrasing yeah. like if if what we're supposed to be doing on stage as artists particularly as vocalists yeah. and and portraying the message through the lyricism why would i tell the story someone else's story their way if i can tell that story in regards to how it relates to me right like, you and know that's the point and yeah and yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how music evolves mm -hmm. is by each and every one of the individuals in certain generations telling their story yeah. in that generation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it evolves and it changes, you know, right. the meaning changes behind the lyrics. You know, generations, we, we you know, we're humans. We, we evolve, we change, we, we move forward. And yeah, I totally right. agree and with that. And have different open perspectives about certain things and certain topics. Like everybody doesn't feel death the same way that mm. someone else does maybe they're not mournful about it maybe they're more appreciative about it because they're like oh this person suffered for a very long time and so i want them to find peace i want yeah. them to find happiness yeah. i don't want to be selfish enough to keep them here with me and they were miserable right you know right. but some people see it in a different light they're like i lost my best friend i lost the love of my life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so how can i move on from that after spending 50 years with them Right. It's not the same. Right. So. And I want to tell that person's story too. And I want to... Right. I think from all the vocalists that I've ever talked to, like when we have the microphone in our hands and we have the platform, we, we're giving a gift, you know? Like I'm literally mm -hmm. being vulnerable here. And if my version or my phrasing of a song is, is different and unique to what anyone's heard before, it's probably because it's very authentic. Like right. I'm... It's... it's coming straight out of here you know so right. yeah we have a we have a very important gift and job to do right yeah even as it pertains to because you know how a lot of times instrumentalists like to have vocalists on tunes on tunes that aren't even like vocalist friendly right, right. so <laughs> it's like okay why do you do that yeah you want me to do do da 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 the whole song of the uh, melody but okay but now I've analyzed those songs as more of a way to figure out what they're trying to say mm. with only sound. Right, and right. And create lyrics. Yeah. And be able to create lyrics to where I can make it musical, I can make it vocal friendly type mm. thing. And I've done that with Nardis, and I've done that with Wildflower. So... And I plan on doing it with more tunes, too. It's just I'm, like, super-duper captivated by the melody in Nardis because it's so beautiful to me. And when they created it, it was, like, a different type of sound that everyone wasn't used to. Everybody mm. didn't, you know, just cling to on the first try. That's why Miles Davis did it, like, a hundred different times, more than a hundred different times. Yeah. Because he was like, I want people to be able to get it, yes. to get what I'm saying yeah. without words. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so before we um, wrap up, first of all, thank you so much for coming along and being an artist. <gasps> thank you for Shut inviting up. me. Yeah, <laughs> yes. no, it's cool. It's final. It's nice to like, I think it's um, kind of like a little full circle moment that you were the first um, artist that I heard perform. Yeah. And like... That was when you were still in college last year when yeah. when we met, and I was like so brand new to the country, and and now you're out of college and you've had these incredible experiences and you're working on yeah. like all these amazing projects and I'm far less new than I was thankfully, okay. um, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's really cool to like circle back in and, and and get like updates on that. So, yes, yes, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming along. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your time. And for those who may be listening or watching, if you're an artist around Atlanta or Georgia or even the wider area of America, but you happen to be visiting and you'd like to be here on Artist Shout Out, please let us know. You can reach out to us at Vision One Media ATL on Instagram. You can find us at Vision One Media on YouTube. We're Vision One Media on Facebook. If you want to email us, it's Vision One Social at gmail.com. You can also reach out to me. I'm Ella Beth Music on Instagram. Um, we're always looking for more people to chat with, to interview. I'm always looking to connect and know 
network um, here in this awesome, awesome scene, this awesome city. So if you'd like to do that, please let us know. Please reach out and we'd love to get in, to uh, in contact with you. But it's been lovely chatting with you. Thank you. And it's been chatting with you too. All the best for the rest of your endeavors this year. And I'm very much looking forward to that EP. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming along and thanks for listening. <laughs>